It is a common knowledge that hydrogen is a gas that naturally exists in the universe. Being the first element of the periodic table, it is considered the lightest element. It occurs on Earth in vast quantities of water in the ocean, the ice packs, rivers, and lakes. Hydrogen is the most abundant element in the universe, three times more abundant than helium. On Earth, hydrogen ranks ninth among the elements in abundance. Another fact about hydrogen is that it is colorless, odorless, tasteless, and non-toxic. It is highly flammable but does not ignite unless an oxidizer and ignition source are present. With its characteristics and abundance, there is no denial that hydrogen is a late starter comparing it to other renewable technologies. This is due to the fact that hydrogen's production and storage issues have kept it at bay. Yet scientists have found new discoveries on how to handle these issues. In fact, hydrogen has been dubbed as the fuel of the future. Some of the world's biggest car companies such as Toyota, Hyundai, and BMW regard hydrogen as an energy source for sustainable transport. Hydrogen-powered cars convert compressed hydrogen to electricity to power motors. Many believe in its eco-friendly profile since it is a clean fuel. When burned, it gives off water instead of carbon dioxide. Simply put, the hydrogen fuel cells for automobiles being developed today produce no harmful emissions, only giving off water vapor and warm air. Hence, they have the potential to revolutionize transportation. However, as what we have said earlier, the commercial viability and safety of transporting hydrogen is a sticking point despite its abundance in the atmosphere. This is where we stop and contemplate on the recent advancement that the scientists have discovered. The discovery of green hydrogen. What is green hydrogen? Can this really address the issues of hydrogen production and storage? Could this be a greener alternative to fuels? Let's find out in this video. Let us start by defining the hydrogen as the most recurrent element yet one of the most clinging elements. Hydrogen is actually one of the best energy carriers since it easily connects to the other elements. One of its special features is that it is considered clean among other elements and energy sources. It is so clean that the clarity of a small amount of oxygen is added to a fuel cell. Hydrogen power produces water alone as a byproduct. Because of its abundance, hydrogen can be obtained from a variety of sources, including fossil fuels and biomass. Yet, one concern is that it is a clinging element, meaning it has to be separated from other elements before it can be used, making it less energy efficient since it requires a significant amount of both time and energy. Hence, it takes more energy to make hydrogen compared to other power systems such as electric vehicle batteries. There are three types of hydrogen power, the gray hydrogen, blue hydrogen, and green hydrogen. Gray hydrogen is created from natural gas or methane, using steam methane reformation but without capturing the greenhouse energy made in the process. This is the most common form of hydrogen production. Blue hydrogen is produced from natural gas using a process called steam reforming, which brings together natural gas and heated water in the form of steam. The output is hydrogen, but also carbon dioxide as a byproduct. It is sometimes described as low carbon hydrogen. Green hydrogen is produced by using clean electricity from renewable energy sources, such as solar or wind power, to electrolyze water. Electrolyzers use an electrochemical reaction to split water into its components of hydrogen and oxygen, emitting zero carbon dioxide in the process. Although green hydrogen makes up a small percentage among hydrogen due to its expensive and inefficient method of hydrogen gas production, there is no doubt that scientists would still go for green. Yet the challenge relies on the hydrogen production storage and transportation, which necessitates a fresh and novel approach. Can the result of recent technical advancements answer to the issues of this novel approach? Hisata's capillary fed electrolyzer introduces a unique approach to the process. Paul Barrett, Hisata's CEO, says electrolyzer technology has been too inefficient and too complex to make green hydrogen attractive. The problem lies on the property of hydrogen which can store more energy per pound, 
but it also drains power at every step, meaning you are continually losing potential energy while protecting the smallest element on the planet from physically seeping through the cracks from its birth and electrolyzes to its final resting place in a fuel cell. This is where he sought to discover that the hindering efficiency in electrolyzer cells is resistance, which typically come from bubbles which are non-conducting in mass electrodes. Imagine how a simple bubble from hydrogen can hinder so much of its potential in the electrolyzer technology. Recall that electrolysis produces hydrogen and oxygen from the breakdown of water. These non-conducting bubbles in the electrolyte solution build up on the electrodes, obstructing sections of the electrode and slowing down the process and lowering the efficiency. Hisada's capillary-fed electrolyzers uses a reservoir at the bottom of the cell to keep the electrolyte separate from the anode and cathode. The reservoir then is pulled through an inter-electrode separator which is both porous and hydrophilic. Capillary action is the term appropriated for it, attributing it to the way the water flows up a straw when the pressure changes, a consequence of very simple physics. As a result, the electrolyte maintains direct touch on one side alone and the gases are still created without the bubbling action that obstructs the process since no water is pulled to the electrolyte side. The other side, however, can continue to release gas uninhibited. Hence, the capillary action naturally draws up more water to replace the water electrolyzed out of the separator. This keeps everything function smoothly as the process goes on. As a conclusion, these electrolyzers can be as high as 98% efficient without the presence of the pesky bubbles. This is 10% higher than the efficiency of a current state-of-the-art commercial electrolyzer, which only runs in 83% efficiency rate. Hisada's world-leading hydrogen electrolyzer technology has been recognized on the global stage with groundbreaking research published in top-tier peer-reviewed scientific journal Nature Communications. With Hisata's competitive target of reaching gigawatt scale production by 2025, they may contribute to filling up the gap in the market for a less expensive yet more efficient electrolyzer. This will make the hydrogen power reach its full potential in renewable technologies. While this can be a promising discovery in the production of green hydrogen, Hisata is not the only one in competition in enhancing the electrolyzers. Korean Institute of Science and Technology or also known as KIST, have tested a novel type of membrane that solves the problem of electrolyzer production corrosiveness. PEMs or proton exchange membranes are also used in most electrolyzers to allow positively charged hydrogen ions to pass through to the cathode and practically combine with electrons to generate hydrogen gas. The challenge, however, lies on the acidic environment which is extremely demanding on equipment, necessitating the use of costly metals such as platinum, ruthenium, iridium, or titanium and electrodes on their separator plates. To speed up the reaction, the process used platinum group metals or PGMs, but it can be poisoned by numerous impurities in the input gas stream. These include carbon monoxide or other gases that may be pollutants. Yet, this problem is addressed by switching to anion exchange membranes. Negatively charged hydroxide ions pass through these membranes and electrode assemblies and combine to form water molecules at the anode. This allows hydrogen atoms to gravitate towards the cathode. These membranes can operate in alkaline conditions without the need for expensive metal catalysts like platinum, titanium, etc. However, these membranes have not been accepted to the market, blaming its poor performance and proclivity. Recently, KIST conducted tests on a new membrane and electrode assembly that outperformed their anion exchange membrane counterparts by a factor of 6 and lasted 10 times as long. They achieved this by increasing the specific surface area of the structure, combining it with ion conducted PFAP based compounds. This results to increase surface area's more conductivity. In theory, more energy is produced over its lifetime in cheaper expenses. With all the discoveries made in the improvement of hydrogen production, 
Could it be a critical enabler of the global transition to sustainable energy and net zero emissions economies? Efficiency-wise, Hisada's capillary-fed electrolyzer takes only 41.5 kilowatt hours per kilogram of hydrogen to run. When compared to the current commercial electrolyzers, 52.5 kilowatt per hour. A stunning 95% overall system efficiency is a huge improvement over the industry benchmark. Their design too ensures that every drop of hydrogen is squeezed out with not a single bubble going to waste. Likewise, advancements done by KIST in their AEM surpasses current technology, but is not as long lasting. To be precise, PM electrolyzers have a normal lifespan of 50,000 hours or approximately 6 years, while AEM electrolyzers have a lifespan of about 3,000 years. While AEM is less expensive, the debate goes on to its lifespan and adaptability. This membrane though is important not just in electrolysis but also in hydrogen fuel cells carbon capture. Given the limitation of these discoveries, it is but a sure prediction that as we refine this technology, the higher the efficiency rate becomes which aid green hydrogen to compete with other renewable sources of energy. While hydrogen production still has drawbacks to be given solutions and many more money and experiments to be done, hydrogen energy is still thriving. A good indicator that we can still go for green since we already have a goal of a clean energy sources for a better and greener future. Could this really be the so-called unprecedented momentum around the world to fulfill hydrogen's long-lasting potential as a clean energy solution? Let us know in the comment section down below.